Today, I want to share about Down syndrome, which uh, vastly and deeply uh, discussed in MRCOG. But just let just go back to the history first, because it carries a very interesting history. Let's go back in 1862 when uh, our Dr. Langdon Down, which is um, from where this Down syndrome gets its name. So Dr. Langdon Down was uh, actually a British uh, doctor who works in the asylum and also special hospital, which uh, he found out that uh, there is a group of people with mental retardations and adults with um, the IQ of uh, eight to nine-year-old children. This pe- This group of people usually have a low immunity, easily get infected immunity and they also always associate with the congenital heart anomaly they have a higher risk of getting leukemia cancer and as they uh, grow up they usually becomes obese and they have a short stature uh, relatively small in the upper populations with the height of 152 centimeter for male and also 142 uh, centimeter in female. 154. And at the same time, so the length and down looks at uh, this group of people. They also suffering from the GIT like um, duodenal atresia. And also Hirschsprung's disease with um, a disease with the parasympathetic nervous system uh, anomality. So, looking at this uh, class of people, Dr. Langdon Down wrote down about the um, features, the facies of the Down syndrome, uh, or back then he called it as a Mongolian, Mongolism. And he further characterized the Mongolism as having a flat face with small chin and Mongolian eyes with hypothalamism and low set ears, flat nose, fairly small uh, mouth with relatively big tongue and short neck. So looking at these fascists, he further classified, which I think very interesting, further into Malay classifications, uh, Utopian, and also Caucasians. So Malay is actually quite famous back then in 1860-something. So this termination was previously used, but now nowadays we use the Down syndrome because this carries a lot of racism and ethnicism. So, um, later back then, people just classify them as the Mongolism, but there are limited knowledge about the uh, trisomy or aneuploidy until in 1925 uh, when a group of research from France, which leads by Dr. Turpin, started to uh, study further in the polymalformatives uh, syndrome. And as you can see, some of the soft markers of the Down syndrome also shared by other syndromes like in Edwards and also Patau. So they focus on the malformative syndrome and try to look at the karyotype. And a lot of studies have been done until 1950s when Dr. Martha Gaucher joined uh, he, she's actually a uh, France and um, she graduated from Harvard University and become a pediatrics uh, cardiologist she started to join go back to France join dr. Turpin um, uh, studies research on the this polymalformative syndrome and she started the first person who do, who did the cell culture in vitro cell culture in vitro cell culture she used her own techniques and at one point because of the limitations of the resource and funds in France she needs to use her own money to buy the lab apparatus to do the cell culture and finally 
in 1956-57 she found out about the this 21 chromosome trisomy so when she described this she did all the cell culture and the lab works and she gave her slide to her friends which is Dr. Jerome Lejuni because Dr. Jerome Lejuni because Dr. Martha Gusher she doesn't have a camera that can capture this uh, trisomies so she did the slides and gave to Dr. Uh, Jerome Lejuni to be captured the picture to be captured unfortunately Dr. Jerome Lejuni uh, took this light and started to studies on this and in 1958 he published a paper with uh, himself as a primary investigator and Dr. Martha Gosher and Turpin as a second co-author but at one point um, he wrongly spelled the name of uh, family name of Martha Gosher and later uh, Dr. Martha Gosher's name was excluded from the studies and a lot of foundations back then um, was uh, started to use Dr. Lee Juni's name for their associations as the founders of the trisomy 21. So it's a catastrophe that happened in the scientific world. Uh, but however, in 2014, somehow Dr. Martha Gosher gets a chance to present in a uh, human genomic conference in France. And she started to talk about the truth, about the, um, the originality of the works. And somehow it's quite difficult to bring the case to the court because Dr. Jerome Lejuni already died in 1994. So, because of this, they cannot do much about the case. So, the France Federations uh, give an honour to Dr. Martha Gosher as the founder and they have a private ceremony to celebrate this. And back then, uh, they relate the Down syndrome with the trisomies and they advocate to do amniocentesis. And there is when we get the risk, the maternal age risk, maternal age relations with the Down syndrome, where if, uh, as we know, age of 20, 30, 35, 40, 45 year old, we have a different risk, uh, one in 1,500 in 20 year old, 31 in 900, I just rounded up, one in 270s, at 40 year old, the usual quoted number is 1 in 100 and 1 in 50. So amniocentesis itself is an invasive procedure which carries the miscarriage risk of 1% for each procedure. So previously, they advocate all women at 40 year old to do amniocentesis to look at this uh, Down syndrome. But later on, the American society advocate to screen at a higher uh, uh, at uh, at the age of 35. So all women at 35 year old needs to do amniocentesis for the Down syndrome. But it is not good enough because the risk of having a miscarriage of a normal um, fetus is actually higher than the risk itself in relates to the maternal age. So that is why in 1970, uh, because of these advocations, further study was done and in 1980, we started to, around here, the scientists further uh, look through the biomarkers. Biomarkers that can be raised or reduced in Down syndrome. So it starts with the PAPE, uh, pregnancy associated uh, plasma protein A, uh, and then HCG. This can be done during the first trimester. Nowadays, we call, called it a combined test. And then um, we can increase the, f uh, the sensitivity further if we do a, a triple and also the credible test. So we have AFP, HCG. If you want to increase further, we can do estriol um, and also inhibin A. It's a quadruple. So these biomarkers can guide us which patients need to have the amniocentesis.